W. Fitch Company presents the Fitch Bandwagon, starring Alice Faye. You never know just how much I love you. You never know just how much I care. And Bill Harris. Won't you come with me to Alabama? Let's go see my dear old mammy. She's frying eggs and brawling hammy. That sugar cured hammy. That golden gravied hammy. And that's what I like about the song. Although New Year's Day isn't until next Wednesday, Phil Harris is already giving serious thought to the coming year. About 11 o'clock yesterday morning, we find him in the kitchen carrying out one of his New Year's resolutions. One. <laughs> Two. Three. Phil, what are you doing out here? Emptying all these bourbon bottles. I've drained every one in the case. Oh, Phil, you did? Yes, I did. Now hand me the champagne, kid. This is going to be the best bowl of punch I ever made. <laughs> Bill Harris, that's just like you. What do you mean? Some people might drop in. Now, you know, the only reason I keep the stuff around is for my friends. That's just it. You always end up being your own best friend. Uh, well, don't worry about it, kid. Hey, look what I got for us yesterday. Two tickets for the Rose Bowl game. Rose Bowl tickets? Where on earth did you get them? I got buddies down at the city hall. <laughs> Well, are they good seats? The best in the stadium. That's what you said last year, and look what happened. What do you mean? We sat right on the 50-yard line. I know, but every few minutes I had to run out on the field with a water bucket. <laughs> <laughs> on you, it looks good, baby. <laughs> and anyway, you did not, and leave the jokes to me. I wish I'd have left that one to you. You get more like Mary Livingston every day. <laughs> Give them two lines and you never hear the last of it. Yankety, yankety, yank. They want everything funny from then on out. Take it easy. Let me be funny. All right. Besides, we can't go to the game. You know, Mother always has open house on New Year's Day. Yeah, open house, open house, some open house. I remember last year with them money-grabbing brothers of yours hanging around. They're not money-grabbing. Maybe not, but it's the first time I was ever rolled in a private home. <laughs> Phil, why must you say things like that about my family? Oh, I don't know. It's just because I'm so cute and clever and all that. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't help it. I don't know what... Hey, there's a phone. Grab it. Hello? Yes? To whom do you wish to speak? Oh, to whom do you wish to speak? Oh, brother. <laughs> what? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid we have a faulty connection. Oh, faulty connection. How do you like this kid? <laughs> she never knew there was a telephone till she uh, hitchhiked into Hollywood. <laughs> Bill, you stop that. I'm trying to talk. Oh, yes. How are you? Of course I remember you. How are your children? Oh, how are your children? The guy's probably a cocker spaniel, and she's asking him how's these children. <laughs> how's these children? How's your children? Yes, yes, we'll be home all day, drop in any time. Oh, sure, sure, come on over. That's why a guy marries a beautiful blonde and builds a 15-foot wall, just to have people drop in. Drop in, bud, any time. Well, all right, Chris. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Drop dead already. What's the matter with Bill you? Bill Harris, I suppose that was your idea of a joke. Oh, well, I couldn't help it, honey. To whom do you wish to speak? <laughs> oh, honey, I ain't heard goo like that since you were trying to get in pictures. <laughs> What do you mean? You know what I mean. You know the time you rigged up that loudspeaker in front of Daryl Zanuck's house. I did no such thing. Are you kidding? You even had a singing commercial for him. 
I'm Alice Faye, I hit the spot. My acting's great, my singing's hot. Twice as much for a contract, too. Alice Faye is the girl for you. Xanax, 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 Xanax. <laughs> You needn't be so funny, Phil. It so happens that was a reporter on the phone from one of the fan magazines. Oh, uh, another one of them reporters, huh? Well, no wonder you were buttering them up like that. He wants to come over later this afternoon and interview me. That's right, to interview you. I suppose that means that you want me to get lost again, huh? Of course not. Whatever gave you that idea? What do you mean? Last time you made me put on a pair of overalls and pretend I was the gardener. <laughs> well, you could hardly blame me. You always put on such an act. I'll never forget the time they came out to take pictures from photo play. What did I do? What did you do? You insisted upon posing on a bearskin rug. <laughs> well, I looked exceptionally alluring that day. I was wearing my off-the-shoulder sweatshirt. <laughs> Mr. Harris, are you looking for something in that pantry closet? Yes, I am, sissy. One of them fag, uh, fan magazines are uh, sending a reporter over this evening. Oh, that's too bad, Mr. Harris. Your bearskin rugs at the cleaners. No, no, no. I was looking for that old scrapbook of mine. It's a big book full of uh, pictures and clippings. Oh, you mean that big book with the leather cover and the gold lettering? Yeah, yeah, that's oh, it. Oh, dear. I've been using pages out of that to line the garbage pail. <laughs> oh, sissy. Hey, here it is, and look what you've done. There are about a hundred pages missing. Oh, are there? Yeah, what a horrible thought. <laughs> oh, sissy, half of my life strewn over the Los Angeles City dump. Oh! <laughs> With orange peels yet. Well, Mr. Harris, I'm awfully sorry. Oh, it's all right. It's done now. Hey, there's still plenty of good stuff in here, though. Here's a picture I'm glad you didn't throw out. Oh? Oh, baby. Atlantic City, 1934. Oh, oh you beautiful doll, you. Oh, you dove. <laughs> ah, you pretty, 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 pretty. Mr. Harris, Mr. Harris, stop that. You're getting your picture all wet. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I was overcome with emotion. Well, you can't fight those things, you know, well. sissy. Hey, look, will you do me a favor? Now, uh, try to piece this scrapbook together and leave it on the table in the den, because I gotta get down to rehearsal now. Well, all right, Mr. Harris, goodbye. Bye. All right, fellas, all right. Now, before we get going with this rehearsal, let's tune up once, will you? Let's tune up. Now, come on, guys. Everybody sounds your A, huh? <laughs> Let me have it once more. That's what I like to hear. Everybody's in tune. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, uh, are we all ready to go? Some of the guys ain't here yet, Phil. Ain't here? Where are they? Practicing for New Year's Eve. <laughs> Practicing for New Year's Eve? Yeah, they're out with their cars on Vine Street, sideswiping each other. <laughs> Hey, Frankie, will you stop that now? Let's don't start that today, huh? Hey, Phil, while we're waiting, I want you to meet a friend of mine here. Phil, shake hands with the best little musician in Hollywood. Pleased to meet you, Phil. And how do you do? And read down about and hey, Bobby, read Bob. Hip, fill you. Hey, Phil, you know, I'm going to have to Wait a minute. What do you know? Leopold Stokowski. <laughs> Oh, Phil, his name's Cody Kirkpatrick. Yeah, Phil. You know, I've been going over this arrangement you got here, and it ain't right. It don't stack, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it don't stack, huh? No. You know the part that goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what about it? Well, it don't move. It's a dud, bud. But you need something like this. <laughs> That's what I need, huh? Repeat. 
It's got that solid beat in the seat, and it don't cheat. <laughs> Look, Frankie, who is this character anyway? What do you mean, Phil? He's a great arranger. Yeah, well, he's arranging to get himself a punch right in the nose. <laughs> oh, now, wait a minute, Corny. <laughs> Corny? Yeah, Mortimer. <laughs> you ain't alive to the jive. You gotta take the staves out of your barrel and roll with a hoop, Droop. <laughs> huh? Yeah, Elmer. You gotta get out of that Santa Fe bridge and wrestle with the trestle where the train goes by. Hey, look, termite. The name is Cootie. I don't care if it's Patrilla. I don't want no part of you. <laughs> well, at least you got to hear my new love song. What's the name of it? Give me 15 minutes more. <laughs> 15 minutes more? Yeah, Jack. I'm a slow worker. Frankie, you better get out of here. <laughs> oh, but Phil, but I'm get just the guy out, out of here. I don't care. Get him out of here. Okay, fellas. Now get back to your seat. We're all here. Let's go with this record. Now take it from me. One, two. <laughs> Way down south of the Mason Dixon, there's a man who's really fixin' to match those taters in his den with possum meat. And that ain't tin. Six tall, slim, slick sycamore saplings, possum up a tree. Somewhere up in one of those saplings, possum's laughing at me. Hound dog brayin', know what he's sayin', possum on a limb. He's been hiding in one of them saplings, and I'll get even with him. Get a going, feet, gotta run, get my gun, and hurry over yonder to the holler. Moon is shining bright on the treetops tonight. Possum ain't far, thar are thar. Six tall, slim, slick, sycamore saplings, possum on the loose. He's been stealing all of my chickens, now I'll cook his goose. Possum know he's in a jam. He'll go good with candy yams. Doggone tootin', sure as I'm shooting. Possum fallin' for me. Six tall, slim, slick, sycamore saplings. Possum up a tree. Somewhere up in one of those saplings. Possum. Possum up a tree Somewhere up in one of those saplings Possum's laughing at me Hound dog bay and know what he's saying Possum on a limb He done hit in one of them saplings And I'll get even with him Get a going feet, gotta run, get my gun And hurry over yonder to the holler Moon is shining bright on the treetop tonight. Possum ain't far, thari are thar. Six tall, slim, slick, sycamore saplings. Possum on the loose. He's been stealing all of my chickens. Now I'll cook his goose. Possum know he in a jam. He'll go good with candy yams. Doggone tootin', sure as I'm shooting. Possum fallin' for me. That possum done eat his fill. Now Phil gonna eat his possum. <laughs> Doggone tootin', sure as I'm shootin' possum fallin' for me. Ladies, if you plan to start the new year with a new hairstyle, first make certain your hair is in good condition. For whether your coiffure is simple or elaborate, it will be more attractive if your hair is for soft, gleaming, beguiling hair. Fitch has been granted the Good Housekeeping Seal and the Parents Magazine Commendation Seal. Fitch is spelled F-I-T-C-H. <laughs> Hey, Frankie. Yeah, Phil. Hey, come here a minute. I got something for you. Good. You open it up. I'll go get the glasses. No. <laughs> no. It's a picture, Frankie. I got it out of my old scrapbook. Well, let's see. Hey, Phil, it's a riot. Yeah. And that ugly little goon on the left. Look at that face. Looks like the oil pan from an old Essex. <laughs> Who is he, Phil? You. <laughs> oh, Phil. 
Hey, you're right. And the other guy's you. Sure, this picture was taken back in 33. Oh, yeah, the time we took that little pickup band to Honolulu. Yeah, some pickup band. The third day we, we was there, they picked up four hula girls and a marmoset monkey. Yeah. <laughs> I got stuck with the monkey. <laughs> you were lucky, kid. I seen the girls. <laughs> ah, some of them wasn't bad. And they all wore grass skirts. Yeah, I remember. And you got arrested for following them down the street with a lawnmower. Yeah. <laughs> well, we caught out of that Hawaiian music pretty quick, though. Remember that big number we did at that nightclub? Yeah. Hey, what was the name of that nightclub? You know, Gold Fobs Key Alakakua Hacienda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I remember. It was the only place in the islands that served fish and poi with matzo balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like yesterday. We'd come out on the stage in our native costumes with them flower things hanging around our necks. You know, them Vivian Lays. Yeah. <laughs> sure. And then they'd throw a baby blue spotlight on us, remember? And then we'd really rock them with that Hawaiian stuff. <laughs> Won't you come with me to Okanakanua now? Let's go see my dear old hula dancing mammy now. Frying eggs and broiling hammy. That's what I like about Hawaii. There you cannot make a very bad mistake you now. Watching girlies dance upon the beach and shake it now. Just like rubber. Hubba hubba. Let's go see how it now can sell. Hongi naka maka soka laka saka miko ro. I'm a kaka sua li a ma ala sienaka. Maka soka laka maka suka maka lika ta. Ketchi huli gum. Alice, why did you bring me in the den? I want to show you something, Phyllis. It must be here somewhere. But what is it you're looking for? A book that belongs to Daddy. Don't be silly, Alice. What would Hotshot be doing with a book? <laughs> well, this one is mostly pictures. Oh, that's different. <laughs> here it is. It says Phil Harris' scrapbook. Oh. Look, it has another title. Casanova Rides Again. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. I think it was Daddy's maiden name. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's look inside. All right. Oh, look, here are some pictures of Daddy in school. In this one, he's in the third grade. I see a lot of little boys, but where is Daddy? Over here. Standing with the girls. <laughs> oh, yes. I didn't recognize him with that hair ribbon. <laughs> Here's a picture of Daddy in the fourth grade. And here he is in the fifth grade. Uh-oh. Look at this next picture. What's the matter? He's back in the third grade again. <laughs> oh, murder! <laughs> Phyllis, Alice, what are you doing in Daddy's room? I was showing Phyllis Daddy's scrapbook, Mommy. Oh, you better give that to me, honey. I don't think you children should read it. Why not? Well, it's liable to give you a warped conception of the whole human race. <laughs> anyway, you children have to take your nap now. All right, Mommy. <clears throat> Mommy, before we go to bed, sing us that funny song about the zipper. Zipper? Oh, I know. She means zippity doo dah. All right, baby. Zippity do da, zippity a. My oh my, what a wonderful day! Plenty of sunshine heading my way. Zippity do da, zippity a. Mr. Bluebird on my shoulder. It's the truth, it's actual, everything is satisfactual. Zippity do da, zippity a. Wonderful feeling, wonderful day.
zippity do da, zippity a. My oh my, what a wonderful day! Plenty of sunshine heading my way. Zippity do da, zippity a. Mr. Bluebird on my shoulder. It's the truth. It's actual. Everything is satisfactory. Zippity do da, zippity a. Wonderful feeling. What a wonderful day. Phil, I didn't know you were home. Yeah, I got in a few minutes ago. Hey, kid. Hey, you're all dressed up for that interview guy, ain't you? Uh-huh. You like this dress? Yeah, honey. You look prettier than the back end of a buckboard wagon on going to meeting day. <laughs> you are pretty, honey. I just bought it last week. Yeah. That's one of them new pleasant dresses, ain't it? No, no. Peasant dresses. Well, honey, from over here, the whole setup looks mighty pleasant. <laughs> mighty pleasant. <laughs> Phil, what are you doing with that scrapbook? I'm just looking through it. Hey, wait till I lay some of this stuff on that reporter. Oh, Phil, I wouldn't show him that. Why not? Well, for one thing, that picture of your father in there. That's not my father. It must be. He has a jug in each hand. <laughs> that ain't no jugs. That's me and my brother. <laughs> That's my drinking brother, gal. <laughs> Why, my father was a very temperate man. For years, his slogan was, down with liquor. Down with liquor? Sure, why, he downed more liquor than any man at ten. <laughs> well, I wouldn't brag about a thing like that. Well, why not? I've come a long way since them days, and I'm a changed man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Harris, I never thought you'd have a layout like this. You're married to Alice Faye. You got two swell kids, four Cadillacs. A gold rib cigarette lighter and six pairs of yellow shoes. What are you talking about? Why, certainly, kid. I really made something out of myself. Think what I could have done if I'd have learned to read and write. Yes, you might have been another Mortimer Snurd. I guarantee I wouldn't sit on that old man's knee if I was another Mortimer. I'd find me a guy with some hair. <laughs> Honey, you know something? I'll never forget the day I entered that first grade. When I went to the first grade, I had to walk five miles to get to school. Five miles? Yeah, and that was a pretty long walk for a boy 14 years old. <laughs> and without no shoes, either. Oh, Phil, that's terrible, having to go to school without shoes. Oh, it wasn't so bad. You know, every spring, Mom would give me a clean handkerchief and whitewash my feet. <laughs> Phil, you're making that up. I am not. On the 4th of July, she'd stick flags between my toes and paint them red, white, and blue. Oh, oh stop it, Phil. I'd like to look through this scrapbook. Okay. Oh, this scrapbook, honey. What a picture this would make. I can see it now on the marquee. Through the deep south with box back coat and sen sen. <laughs> oh, Phil, look at this picture here. It's us the day we became engaged. Yeah? How can you tell? By the ring on my finger. Oh, sure. Hey, that was some sparkler. That rock cost 3,500 bucks. No, Phil, it was 3,600. No, I think it was 35. No, no, it was 36. I remember distinctly when I wrote out the check. <laughs> yeah, that was the day your brother tried to commit suicide. <laughs> hey, this book really brings back memories, honey. You know, I could just sit here and look at this thing all day. Look at the time. We've been looking at this book for two hours. This has really been quite a revelation to me. Yeah, what a volume. Think what Kathleen Windsor could have done with this. <laughs> hey, that must be that reporter from the magazine. Show that rascal I'll in there. I'll, I'll let, let, him talk. In. let him in. How do you do? I'm Chris Clawson, the reporter who called you this morning. Oh, yes, Chris. Won't you come in? Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Clawson, this is my husband. Hiya, Doc. How do you do, Mr. Fay? <laughs> of course.
course, Miss Fay, I'm familiar with your wonderful work in pictures, but my magazine would like to know if you're considering another one at the present time. Well, no. You see, my children take most of my time. Oh, yes, yes. You do have two lovely children. I have six pair of yellow shoes. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Well, Miss Fay, our readers hope that you're not forsaking the screen permanently. Once I didn't have any shoes, my mom used to have to wa whitewash my feet. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm still very interested in pictures. I read a script now and then, Chris. I don't know how to read. <laughs> Everyone hopes you'll do another musical, Miss Fay. They were so delightful. I made a short at Monogram once. <laughs> now... Uh... <laughs> Miss Fay. In one scene, any... I even had a line, and I had to learn it by ear. I don't know how to read, you know. <laughs> yes. Uh, now... <laughs> Miss Fay, I'm... I'm on the Jack Benny program. Miss Fay, if you have I know any... Dennis Day personally. <laughs> uh, Miss Fay, Him and me I... has our own programs now. <laughs> hey, uh, would you like to feel my yellow shoes? <laughs> Hey, I got six pairs of them, you know. Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. At the stroke of 12 midnight Tuesday, bells and whistles will herald the beginning of a new year, 1947. Your personal, social, and business successes during the coming year depend greatly on your appearance. You won't look neat and well-groomed if you have unsightly dandruff. So may we suggest you do something about that dandruff this year and use Fitch's Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Fitch is the only shampoo made whose guarantee to remove dandruff is backed by one of the world's largest insurance firms. It's thoroughly efficient, it's easy to use. Simply apply Fitch Shampoo directly to the hair and scalp before adding water and massage. Then add water. Fitch dissolves all traces of dandruff that forms a creamy, rich lather. It floats away the dissolved dandruff and dirt. Thousands who use Fitch regularly like the way this all-around, all-season shampoo leaves the scalp tingling with that clean sensation, leaves the hair thoroughly cleansed, dandruff-free. Get an economical bottle at your drug or toilet goods counter or have professional applications of Fitch's dandruff remover shampoo at your beauty or barber shop. Phil, that was a fine way you acted in front of that reporter. You ruined the whole interview. Well, I don't care. That muzzler had it coming from the minute he called me Mr. Fay. That's I'll get it. I'll get it. And if that's that guy, Clawson, I'll tear the phone out. Hello. Hello, Phil. This is Cootie Kirk Patrick. Oh, uh, no. Look, Phil, I, I just wrote a brand new song, and it's ready, Teddy. Oh, will you stop with that? I don't want to hear about it. Well, it goes like this. Uh, boo, la, boo, la, boo, la, boo, look. Boo, la, boo, la, boo. Oh, Watch, boo. I don't want to hear it. Oh, Goodbye. Stop, stop it. I hung up already. Boo, boo, stop boo, boo, it. Boo, boo, boo. Tune in next week when the F.W. Fitch Company again brings you the Fitch Bandwagon with Alice Fay and Phil Harris. This program is written by Joe Connolly and Bob Mosier, directed by Paul Phillips, with the original music composed and conducted by Walter Sharp.